muted. Go to another session. Am I audible? Can anyone confirm, please? Can one of you confirm? Uh, okay, yes, Shravante, thanks. And uh, are you all able to see my screen? Yes. Thanks, Shravante. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So let's get started. So uh, in this session, we will start uh, another package. So we have covered two packages, uh, uh, Java packages as of now. That is uh, Java.lang and uh, Java.io package. So the third important package is Java.util package. This is one of the most important uh, packages uh, because without uh, this, you won't be able to do anything. So for that matter, uh, your Lang package, your IO package, and your uh, Util package, all the three are very, very important. Okay. So I would uh, request all of you to go through these packages and try to learn more about these packages as much as possible. Okay. So in this uh, session, we will start with uh, java.util and last session, we had the uh, IO package. Okay, we learned uh, how to create uh, and how to uh, like uh, create streams, read from uh, input source and write to a destination. Okay, so all those things we have uh, seen. So I've shared all the programs that we have uh, discussed uh, during our class and uh, one particular, couple of particular programs related to readers and writers as well. Okay. So we, I have a reader test and a writer test. In a reader and writer test, uh, just how to read a file for using reader, and then uh, how to read from read, uh, using reader, and then uh, write it to a destination. So those are the examples I have uh, shared with you all. Hope you would have got it. Uh, okay. So let us uh, continue with this uh, little package. So one of the most important framework uh, that is under that comes under little package is the connection framework. Okay, that is uh, one of the most powerful uh, uh, framework on which. So what you can uh, say is like uh, most of the data structures that you'll be using in your Java program are part of this util program, uh, util uh, package. Okay, so so when we are discussing about collection framework, right? So what is a collection actually? Okay, that is a basic question that comes to everyone. So collection is nothing but a group of objects. Okay, collection is nothing but a group of objects. So we are talking only about objects here. Okay, so we are not talking about primitive data types. Okay, we are not talking about primitive data types here. So we are talking only about objects. Okay, so it is nothing but a group of objects. So how to handle those group of objects? Okay, so that is how uh, that is what is being defined in your collection framework. Okay. So what exactly happens is, say for example, you have a particular container, okay? You have a particular container, and uh, you want to put, you want to uh, kind of like put a lot of uh, objects in this particular container. Okay. So sorry. So you want to put a lot of objects here, or you want to handle uh, objects in this particular container, okay? So I don't have a pen today. Hmm. So how do you handle those uh, group of objects? For example, how do you put those objects in a container? Okay. And how do you read those objects? How do you uh, remove an object? Or if you have another container with the, uh, some of uh, the uh, objects, how do you put those things inside this? How do you remove those things? All those things will uh, is being handled uh, with this particular uh, collection framework. Okay, so we will see uh, how to handle all those things in in this particular session. So mostly this session is uh, a theoretical. Okay, we will not discuss anything about uh, any any programs in this particular session. In next session, we will discuss about programs. Okay, so we will be discussing about the basic uh, things uh, or basic interfaces that uh, are the building uh, blocks of uh, collection framework okay and we will see what are the available methods for those collection frameworks or the interfaces which collection framework provides and uh, based on those things we will start uh, discussing about 
the abstract classes as well as concrete, uh, concrete classes. Okay. When we start discussing about concrete classes, we will start uh, doing our lab exercises, our lab, uh, lab examples. Okay. So the collection framework is built on top of uh, multiple interfaces. Okay. So by now we know that collection is nothing but a group of objects. So to handle all those group of objects, uh, the framework itself is built on top of uh, multiple interfaces. Okay. Uh, so the entire is uh, entire collection framework itself is based on those uh, uh, interfaces, collection interfaces. Let us see what are those uh, basic interfaces and uh, what each and every interface uh, defines. Okay. So the first and the foremost uh, interface is uh, our collection interface. Okay. The first and foremost interface is our collection interface. Uh, this is at the top of all our uh, collection hierarchy. Okay. After object, uh, object. Okay, so collection is at the root of uh, your collection uh, framework. So it defines uh, uh, how to handle group of objects. We will see uh, how how it defines through. Uh, obviously, it is through your uh, methods. Okay, we will see what are the different available methods uh, that are defined are declared in your collection interface, and then how they are being uh, used. How they can be used uh, for handling group of objects. Okay. So next interface is our uh, list interface, which extends collection interface. Okay, that particular uh, in, uh, list interface extends collection interface. Okay, to handle lists. So what are lists here? It is we can compare this with the, the normal list that we will have usually, right? Because say for example you have list of uh, things to buy. Okay, one, two, three. Four, five, okay, six. So it is like uh, the list of uh, things to buy from uh, groceries or whatever it, it may be. Okay, so this is what is being uh, uh, declared using this particular. Uh, that particular behavior is being declared using your uh, list interface. Okay, so list you can have uh, same thing listed out here, right? So you, if, if you want to buy something here, you can also list the same thing here. Normally you won't do it, but it is possible. Okay, so you might forget and write it again here. So duplicate value, duplicate values are allowed in your list. Okay, in your list interface, any list uh, object that in implements your list interface, duplicate uh, duplicate objects are allowed. Okay, uh, next is our uh, set interface, which again extends collection interface. Okay, so in this case, this uh, defines the behavior of uh, normal sets, which does not allow unique elements. I mean, this does not allow duplicate elements. Okay, all the elements must be unique. So we have another interface that is sorted set, which extends set, which in turn extends your collection. Okay, to handle sorted set. Okay, so whatever the objects uh, that you have in uh, a set, particular set, so that will not be sorted. But if you want to sort it, or uh, if you want all the objects, the collection to be in a sorted order. We can use sorted set. Okay, and next we have queue, which is nothing but our first in first out uh, behavior. And uh, there are uh, different uh, uh, sub interfaces for this. We will see uh, when we discuss about uh, queues and exclusively. Okay, we have DQ, which is uh, which extends a queue interface to handle double ended queue, which is like uh, uh, you have. For example, Q defines your uh, sorry. Q defines your uh, first in first out, right? So in this case, you can have uh, you can uh, traverse between uh, from head to, to uh, head to tail and tail to head in both ways. Okay. So that is what is our uh, double ended queue, and then we have navigable set. Okay. In order to search. Uh, so there are certain methods which are defined in your uh, collection interface using which you can query for a particular object. Say for example, you have a collection of objects uh, or group of objects. You want to check whether a particular object exists in the particular uh, group. Okay. 
So you have a certain methods defined or declared in your collection uh, uh, interface. Apart from those things, if you want to use, uh, if you want to search for objects based on some uh, closest matches, like we search in our Google, right? So we can use this particular navigable set inside a set. Okay. Those are the behaviors that are being defined by this basic collection of interfaces in your uh, collection framework. So that is uh, the basic uh, high level uh, view of uh, this collection interfaces. So let us start with each interface one by one. So I'll be covering this particular interface, this one, this, this, and this today. And uh, these two things we will cover uh, in our next session or if at all time permits, okay? We'll cover this thing or you can have it as a exercise or you can read on your own, okay? So let us see if the time permits, we'll try to cover this thing and uh, otherwise mandatory things are these things, okay? Collection, list, queue, set and uh, sorted set. Okay, we'll try to do more examples on these particular interfaces. Okay, let us start with the first interface, that is collection interface. So the relationship between all these interfaces we can see in this particular uh, slide. Okay, so you have uh, at the root you have collection interface. All these things, if you notice, all these things are uh, generic interfaces. Okay, all these things are generic interfaces. Uh, here if you notice, map is not part of collection. Okay, we will discuss about that also. Map is not of uh, not part of uh, collection framework, but we will discuss that. So this this particular uh, forms your collection uh, framework. Okay. So these are uh, some of the uh, implementations of those uh, interfaces. Okay. This is how the implementation for those interfaces. So you can see collection is at the root. It again extends it will interface. So which means you have a, a new version of for loop, right? New version of for loop. Okay. Uh, you have new version of for loop where you can iterate each and every object. So we have seen a couple of examples for arrays, right? So any object that you want to iterate, okay, using the iterator, this particular, that object must in implement iterable uh, interface. Iterable interface, okay. So again, the collection interface as collection interface extends iterable interface. All objects that are part of your collection uh, framework are iterable through iterable through your uh, new version of uh, for loop. That is, you can specify a particular object, and then uh, you need not have to loop loop through using a particular index like you do in your uh, uh, for loop or uh, in your while loop and all. Okay, you can just give your uh, new version of for. Uh, specify the object and then give the collection, collection object. One by one all the objects will be read and you can do whatever the uh, operations that you want to do it. Okay. So this will give you a basic uh, uh, relationship between all the interfaces. Collection, list, list extends collection, that also extends collection, queue also extends collection. Okay. And uh, oh, sorry about that. And Q extends collection, DQ extends Q for the double-ended Q operation. Sorted set extends set, navigable set extends sorted set. Okay, map we will discuss uh, later. Okay. So let us start with the, our first interface that is our collection interface. Okay. Okay, I'll come to you uh, your question, uh, Shavanti. Okay, let us discuss about these things, and uh, when we uh, discuss about uh, all these things, right? When we go to when we start doing our exercises or when we start doing our examples, right? We will understand all these things in a better way. Okay. So she is asking, uh, Shavanti is asking, what is the relation between uh, iterable and uh, iterator? Here is the diagram, this particular part, okay? We'll discuss about those things later. So let us first discuss like uh, 
what are the things that are provided by the basic interfaces okay so let us uh, go so we will discuss about uh, we will start our discussion with the collection interface the root of uh, all our uh, collection framework so it, it is at the root of the collection framework so if you have noticed all the interfaces like the, the basic interfaces are your list your set and then your Q. Okay. Sorry. So all these are the three basic interfaces which defines different, different behaviors. Okay. So these three interfaces extend from your collection interface. Okay. So all the four whatever the methods that are available in collection, list, set, and queue, you should know all the methods. You should remember all the methods. Then you can uh, play with the Java. Okay, be it your advanced Java, be it what not, your web services, which are the technology that are uh, related to Java, you can play around. Okay, so uh, what I would uh, suggest is uh, give more, uh, I mean like uh, you can try to understand more and more, not only stick to whatever we uh, covered in uh, the class. Okay, so uh, you, all of you know how to uh, refer the API, online uh, API reference, right? So you can go through those things and try to understand more and more and try to do more examples. Okay. So the ba basic uh, interface or the, at the root of uh, your uh, uh, collection framework is your collection interface. At the root collection is defined. It must be implemented by any class that handles group of objects. So that is what is uh, framework uh, does. The, uh, the main function of uh, collection framework is to handle group of objects. How to handle group of objects. Okay, so as you ha as you uh, saw in the diagram, so it's a generic interface. We know what are generics, right? So generic and the advantages of uh, using generics as well. So this is a generic interface which is defined uh, this way. So where we pass the type of the object that a particular collection holds through E. So when we were discussing about uh, Generics, uh, we use the particular uh, placeholder for type, right? That is T. So here we are specifying it as E, that's it. Okay. So it extends uh, an interface called iterable as uh, iterable, as we mentioned. So that makes all objects, okay, that are the part of collection framework, iterable through your for each style for loop. That is new version of for loop. Okay. So you can uh, any object that are part of your collection framework you can iterate through uh, new version of your uh, for loop okay as i mentioned before so the, uh, as uh, this particular collection interface is at the core of your uh, collection framework this declares methods that are very important okay that these are the methods which actually defines uh, your collection framework okay that is why you should know all these methods because as you have seen in the diagram uh, in the picture all the interfaces and all the uh, classes concrete classes or abstract classes they either inter uh, implement one of these uh, interfaces okay so that is why uh, whatever the methods that are defined in your collection interface you can use for any of the objects because this uh, this particular uh, interface defines the generic method This particular interface defines the generic interface. Uh, sorry about uh, this handwriting. I don't have the pen uh, here. So I forgot to get that one. So I'm finding it difficult to write here on the screen. Okay. So the main thing what I was trying to tell is all the methods you should be familiar with this. Okay. And there are n number of methods. We will see how to remember those methods. Okay. How to associate those number, those methods uh, so that we can remember them uh, easily. Okay. So let us see those uh, methods defined by collection interface. Okay. So here we have uh, some of the methods which are defined in uh, collection interface. So what what does this do? This is add. Okay. So as the name itself suggests. Okay. Say for example, uh, you have as I discussed, you have a particular container. Okay. 
where you can store your uh, object. So the collection is nothing but uh, you can consider that as a container where you can uh, store your uh, objects, Java objects. Okay. So what is this? What are the generic things that you can think of uh, with respect to container which holds uh, uh, objects? You can add. That is your put. You can add an object to this particular container. Okay. Obviously, you can remove it. Remove a particular object from the container. Okay. Say so you have another container, a small container. You want to put all those things, whatever the object that particular small container contains, in, into this. Okay. This will be your add all. This is your add. Add method. Okay. This is your remove method. Oh, sorry. Okay, and this is your add all method. This is your add all method, and if you want to remove all the objects that are there, or you want to throw all those things, we have a method called clear, and if you want to find out the number of objects in this. Uh, particular uh, container, we have a method called size. Okay. And what else? If you want to search for one particular object, okay, say you want to search for one uh, uh, particular object, say all the students, whatever you are, whoever you are attending here, right? So if I want to search for one particular student, that that is uh, we can check with a particular method called whether it contains. Okay. Just excuse my handwriting today. I am trying to write. Okay. And equals obviously we know what uh, a particular equals does. In this case, it uh, compares two objects, and it returns true if both the objects are uh, same. Otherwise, it returns false. False. Okay. And what else do we have? Uh, uh, to get a hash code of a particular uh, object, you can use this. And uh, if you want to check whether this particular uh, container is empty, you have is empty method. Okay, is empty method. So if you want to uh, read each and every object from the container okay so what you use is you use a method called iterator okay you use a method called iterator so this is where uh, this should be i should be capital here uh, it is an interface iterator interface okay so we will see what are what are the relationship between the iterable and the iterator okay both are interfaces only uh, iterable is also interface and uh, iterator is also interface okay and then we have, uh, as I discussed, uh, remove and remove all. If you want a particular set of objects to be removed, you can specify those uh, set of objects in, in one, one particular collection. And uh, you can specify, like I want to remove this uh, set of uh, objects from invoking collection. Okay. So this particular uh, method, retain all, does exactly opposite of what your uh, remove all does. Okay. So what are you doing in removal? You are passing a set of objects that needs to be removed. Okay, these are the set of objects that needs to be removed from the invoking object, the object which is invoking this particular uh, uh, method. Okay, in this case, you are passing a collection of objects that needs to be retained and remove rest, rest all. Okay. So this is the opposite of your remove all. Okay, so let us see if we have uh, some other method. Yeah, size, it gives the number of uh, elements in a particular, or number of objects in a particular uh, collect, collection. And uh, two array, uh, it is like uh, you get a object, uh, you get an array representation of your uh, collection. Okay, array representation of your collection. Say for example, you have a list of uh, some objects, and you want uh, array uh, representation, like uh, you want an array out of the particular uh, list of uh, objects. Okay, list of, list of objects. So you can use this two array method to get 
a list of objects. Here we have uh, we have uh, any object. Here we have the uh, the return value is your object array. So you can return any uh, object of type anything. Okay. So that is why this particular method returns a uh, type of object. So you know like uh, the uh, base of all the Java classes is our object class, right? So because of that, uh, any reference of a particular uh, object can refer to any of the subclasses in Java. So remember, uh, uh, remember uh, you have, uh, I mean the collection is at the root of your collection framework, right? So all these, uh, sorry. All these methods will be available in all your objects. Okay, objects in the sense all the classes that you are going to use. Okay, so if you are familiar with the collection uh, interface itself, that that will be more than sufficient for handling most of your uh, things. But there are some additional methods, uh, additional uh, R, you can say like uh, overridden methods, which are specific to some particular behavior of uh, uh, the collection uh, object. Okay, we will see what are those things. So as we, as we have seen, uh, to add an object, you have uh, add uh, method. To add a particular collection, you have add all. So to clear a particular collection, you have clear. To search for one particular object, you have contains method, which checks whether a particular object is, uh, whether a particular object exists in uh, uh, collection, okay? Contains all, okay? So wherever you have all, you are passing, the collection object, okay? That is your passing group of objects itself, okay? Equal compares to objects. Hash code, it returns the hash code. Is empty, checks whether a particular collection is empty or not. Uh, iterator, you can iterate through each object within a particular collection. Remove, you can remove an individual object. Remove all, removes a particular collection of objects specified. Retain all, removes all other except this particular set of uh, objects that are specified in the, that are specified as argument to this particular method, okay? Int size gives the number of objects present in the container or your collection, okay? And then to array, it will give you uh, an array of collection objects, okay? So that you can uh, use normal uh, array uh, operations, whatever you want to do, you can like, uh, for example, you can, uh, uh, in order to, uh, I mean, in order to find out how many array elements are there, which should be equal to uh, the value that is written by your size method, you can use like uh, array dot length, okay? Field, you can use it to check whether both the, whatever the array elements uh, that are there, which are copied from a particular collection are equal to size, whatever the value that is written by your size method, okay? So next move on to the list interface. Okay, so as I just mentioned, it, uh, it defines the behavior of a list. Okay, say for example, you have list of uh, things to buy. Okay, from uh, wherever you want to buy, whatever you want to buy. Okay, so you have, you start with list one, two, three, four and all. Okay, notice that you have an index here or the number associated with each item here, okay? Uh, so this list interface extends collection interface and declares a behavior that stores sequence of elements, okay? That stores sequence of elements. Here we have uh, listed these items in a particular sequence, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Remember that we have numbers associated to this list. Lists are nothing but objects, okay? Similarly, uh, the elements or objects that are there in the list, that are there in a list, right? They can be inserted or accessed by their position, okay? By their position. That is where this particular numbers makes sense, okay? So the index is, index starts with zero, okay? The index is zero based, okay? So here we have started with one, two, three, four, but in list zero, one, two, three, four, and so on, okay? 
as I just as I just mentioned, uh, it can have uh, duplicate values. For example, you have mentioned something here and you forgot, and you have mentioned the same thing here. That can happen, right? So you can have duplicate elements or duplicate objects in your list. Okay. So as with other uh, interfaces, this interface is also a generic interface. Okay. The declaration is interface list. And you specify the type of the object that you are going to store in your list. Okay, so maybe at this particular point, uh, all these things uh, may not be uh, kind of like uh, going into your uh, mind. Some of might uh, pick up very fast, but some might feel like uh, we are discussing only methods and all. Okay, so just to tell, all these things uh, will make more sense when we start working on. Uh, classes concrete classes but the basic basis of all these things is these interfaces and we should be very very much uh, very well versed with all these methods and in the, the interfaces okay that is why i am just uh, in this session we will just go through the methods that are uh, associated with each and every interface uh, the basic interfaces that is collection list queue and uh, set interface and once we are uh, familiar with all these uh, methods uh, when we start working on uh, examples, that will make a lot of sense. Okay, so that uh, that is why I'm uh, trying to explain this method uh, with some uh, vague concept with the containers. Okay, that makes sense uh, for that matter. Okay, and uh, so as I just mentioned, list interface extends collection. That means whatever the methods that are declared in your collection interface are available in your list interface. Okay. But some of the methods are overridden so that we can take care of one, two, three, four, these numbers. Okay. It starts with zero, one, two, three, four in our Java list. Okay. So in order to specify these things, some of the methods are Overridden in your list interface. Let us see those things. Okay, so you have a add method in your collection as well, right? Collection interface. So that is being uh, overloaded. You can say overloaded, right? It is not overridden. Overloaded. Okay. You have one more uh, additional parameter introduced. That is your index. That is what it shows here. Okay. That is what it shows here. So index. If you want to add a particular uh, object. In your list, say for example, I want to add it here at index uh, three. So I can specify three. So what will happen? A new object will be added at this particular index, and all these things will be brought down. That is, three and the four item will be uh, moved downward. Okay. Similarly, you can see here. So I can uh, add a particular set of uh, collection or group of objects at this particular index. Okay. So in order to get a particular uh, object, so did we have any method uh, in collection? So see whether, uh, okay. So in order to uh, like uh, see whether a particular object is contained in uh, your uh, collection object, we can use either uh, contain and in order to retrieve, you have to go through only uh, this particular iterator, okay, iterator method. What you have to do is you have to iterate through each and every object to see or to get a, one particular object from your collection, okay. That is your collection interface. But here, uh, in your uh, this, you can specify the index, okay. Like uh, how do you specify index for getting an element from your array okay similarly you can specify the index and use get method okay use get method to get a get an object that is there in a particular index okay and similarly we have seen a couple of methods in uh, while discussing about strings right uh, like index of and last index of okay this particular method gives the index of first occurrence of a particular object this is the object we are trying to search in a collection or group of objects, okay? And uh, say, for example, as your uh, list 
allows duplicate values there may be uh, same object in different uh, indexes okay say for example you have you want to buy ice cream okay you want to buy ice cream so you have uh, some other uh, things listed here and okay and the uh, 15th item is our uh, again ice cream i have mentioned it as ice cream okay so vanilla ice cream so i mentioned it so the index of will give the first occurrence of index of first occurrence of this particular uh, object i am searching for uh, uh, ice cream vanilla ice cream so there are two objects okay for that uh, vanilla ice cream so the index of will give first occurrence of uh, the particular object the so last index obviously it will give the last index of the same object what you are searching for in this okay so So in order to iterate through your uh, list, you have a separate method called the list iterator. Okay, list iterator. It returns a list iterator object. Okay, from the start of your list. For example, you have your let us start with zero only from now onwards. Okay, two, three, four, and you want to uh, iterate through or enumerate through or you want to read. Say for example, it is like uh, taking attendance. Okay, in our uh, college and all, we take attendance for the students who are present and all, right? Similar to that one, uh, we can iterate through to check each and every object that are present in a particular container or your collection. Okay. So, if you want an iterator uh, from the start of your list, you can use iterator without passing any argument to this particular iterator, list iterator. Okay. But if you want uh, from a particular index, you can specify that as well. Okay, so to remove an object at a particular index, you use remove method. To set, say for example, you have some object at a particular index, but you want to change the object to some other object. So you can specify at a particular index, you can uh, specify one particular object as argument to this uh, set method that will replace the object existing the object with the one that is passed as argument to this. Uh, Method. It is similar to your uh, setters, whatever we discussed in our previous classes. Get us some setters, right? We don't have, yeah. So you can say, like, uh, uh, you have get here, yeah, right? This particular object is your getter for a particular ob object and in, uh, index. And uh, this you can use it as, this you can consider as your setter object, okay? So, you have a list of uh, you have a list of object or a set of object and you want a sublist from that or say for example i want from 3 to 4 items or objects from this uh, list so you can do that using a sublist uh, method uh, by specifying the start index and the end index so here you will get all the elements that starts from start index till end minus 1 index okay that is important to remember So are you all following uh, this one, uh, whatever I am trying to explain? Please let me know if you have any questions, okay? If you need any clarification, please let me know. Okay, so I am trying to explain uh, by relating it to whatever we normally see in our day-to-day uh, -day life, okay? So, right. Okay, thanks, you. thanks for confirming. Yeah. Okay, you doesn't have any questions so let us start with the Kavita also okay thanks Kavita uh, yeah let us start with the, the set interface okay the next interface is set interface so let us stop uh, by discussing uh, this interfaces first okay the basic interfaces that we are discussing so tomorrow uh, if it uh, let us see whether we can cover the entire thing in one session if we are not able to cover in one session we will uh, try to cover it in uh, two sessions okay tomorrow 
uh, morning as well as in the evening session. Okay, and uh, uh, we will not have any class on uh, Friday because that is a festive uh, festival day. And uh, if we are not able to cover uh, uh, in one session, uh, we will try to take two sessions tomorrow. And one more session will be left that is for threads. Okay, that we will have it on uh, uh, Saturday. If at all, uh, if it is okay with everyone, okay. Okay, let's move on to the set interface. So set interface is uh, define a set, okay, set of objects. So as we discussed be, uh, before, it defines a behavior that does not allow duplicate elements. This is very important to remember, okay. So it won't allow duplicate elements. Wherever you have a requirement where duplicate elements are not required or duplicate elements are not allowed, blindly you can go ahead and use that interface, okay? And then what else it uh, defines? I think I have mentioned the same thing again here. So that is fine. I'll make those corrections for before uh, sharing these slides, okay? So it, it extends, uh, similarly, as we have seen in the diagram, it extends collection interface, okay? And defines a behavior that does not allow duplicate elements, okay? So as uh, we had additional methods in uh, list interface, this does not define any additional methods. So like it is like a big relief for us, right? It does not... Uh, if there are any additional methods, otherwise we have to kind of like go through those methods as well to remember, right? So it is also a generic interface where you specify the type of the uh, object that you would, you would store in set interface, okay? So you specify the type of the object that you will store it in a set collection, okay? So subclass of your, uh, so when the, the we were thinking like, uh, interface did not define any method, there, here comes a set, a socket set interface, okay? But even though uh, set does not define any method, socket set defines some of the methods, okay? So again, uh, here uh, we are stuck with some more methods to remember, okay? But if you think about uh, uh, what a particular object defines, right? Then you can uh, easily kind of like uh, think of uh, uh, the methods. Okay, for example, any collection, okay, for any collection, be it your list, be it your queue, be it your uh, 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 set, all the methods that are defined in your collection uh, interface, you can use them, okay. So, when you come to your uh, list interface, list objects, uh, there are uh, multiple classes that you would use, that is uh, one of the example is array list, okay. So, in such scenarios, what you can do is you can use uh, corresponding methods specific to that particular uh, object, that is uh, your list interface related uh, methods. That is, you want to get a particular object on, a, on an index. Okay, say for example, you want a, uh, an object that is there in uh, the index 2. So you can get it by using get. So you can think of like getter and setters are there for uh, individual objects. So you can pass the index and you can get it, remove also. So the generic thing that you would use is, as I just men mentioned, add, add all, remove, remove all, and uh, retain all, which is nothing but add and remove uh, both together. Number of elements, you will keep uh, size. If you want to throw all the objects that are there inside a particular uh, collection, clear method. And uh, array, array representation of this collection, two array is there. And what else? Uh, Greeting uh, hash code that we normally won't use, and then clear remove remove all retain uh, retain all, and the clear size add add all. So those are the methods you can easily remember. Okay. So if you have if you if you can remember uh, all the methods that are defined in your collection, you can work with any any of the uh, objects in uh, collection framework. But that again, like uh, if you want to use specific uh, uh, collection, like list or set or queue, you can use specific methods to define in those uh, interfaces, okay? 
and uh, let's move on to our set, sorted set. But uh, as uh, we have seen in the diagram, it extends set interface and uh, again it extends collection interface in, uh, indirectly through set and defines the behavior uh, of collection wherein uh, you see the objects are uh, sorted in ascending order. Okay, that is the normal natural behavior. Uh, we will see how we can change that behavior. Okay, if you want to change that behavior to uh, descending order and all, we can see all those things. Okay, we can do the, those things as well. Okay, let us see what are the methods available in our set interface. Sorted set interface. Okay, so as we discussed, this is also a generic interface. So the major impact on uh, introduction of your uh, generics, right? That was on your collection framework. So whatever the class that uh, that were not generic or that were that you are seeing as generic in uh, currently or in your slides now, they were all non-generic before uh, generics were introduced uh, from uh, Java 5. Okay. So all those things, whatever the uh, uh, classes, objects, or interfaces that were there in the collection framework before generics were introduced, all those were made as uh, generics, generic classes, interfaces. And then some additional uh, interfaces, classes, and all, all were added. Okay, so uh, in one of the examples, we have seen uh, comparator, right? We just uh, we will see more about these things uh, in uh, upcoming session. Uh, but now this is used to compare two invoke uh, two sets. Okay, comparator will compare two sets. Okay, invoking set and the other set. And then if you want to get the first object, you can call the first object, the first method, which will return the first object in your set. Okay. So if you want to specify or if you want head set, if some of you are familiar, if any of you are familiar with the Unix commands, right, uh, these are similar to those things. So you have uh, commands like uh, head, you have commands like tail, all those things, right. If you don't specify from where to where you want, it will head will uh, display uh, first 10 lines of a particular document if you are trying to uh, uh, display. If you, are, if you are trying to use a particular uh, uh, document or if you want to read the document using the head command in Unix, I don't want to confuse you all. I am just trying to compare these things. Okay. So first 10 lines you can read using head command. Similarly, you have head set. You can specify the end of object. Okay, it reads from top to uh, till that uh, object is reached, whatever the object that you have specified here. Okay, the last object you can read it or you can get it by using last method. So these are all uh, uh, self-explanatory methods. That is why uh, Java is more intuitive. Okay, uh, and next you have uh, similar to what we had uh, method for uh, list, right? Sublist. Here we have subset. Okay, so uh, uh, similar to our uh, headset, we have tail set. In uh, headset, we specify the last uh, element. In what uh, element we need uh, the sublist subset? Here we specify the start index. From where you have you want to read? From which object you want to read? In the uh, end. Okay, for headset, you specify the end actually. So if you want to, in a, in a collection, if you have uh, 20 elements, and if you want to read 10 elements, uh, headset will give, uh, you can specify the object, 10th element object you can specify, it reads from top to the 10th element, till the 10th, 10th element, okay. And uh, we have one more uh, interface, which is a subset of sorted set, that is your navigable set. Uh, this is introduced in uh, Java 6. As we just mentioned, it introduces it uh, extends sorted set. Okay, it extends sorted set. So it allows you to uh, based on a given value, it allows you to uh, query for a particular object, matching object. Okay, this is also we will see an example of each and everything. Uh, so when we see an example, that time it makes uh, more sense. Okay, uh, what each and every methods will do. Okay, by now you would have got some basic idea of uh, uh, what exactly each and every method does, but when we start doing examples, that time we will understand uh, it in a better way, all those things in a better way, okay. This is also a generic interface, type of the uh, object that uh, we want to store it in uh, 
that we are we specify in this uh, parameter type parameter okay so we'll discuss about uh, the methods of uh, navigable set in the next session so let us move on to the next one that is our queue interface so as uh, with other uh, interfaces this extends extends collection interface and implements uh, uh, first in first out uh, behavior okay so the we know we know what is the queue right uh, the first in uh, first out who stands first he will get uh, uh, in a queue right uh, who who will uh, come first they will be served first so that is what is your first in and first out so this is also a generic interface to pass the type of uh, the object as type parameter okay some of the methods that are uh, defined by uh, queue interface of element uh, you have queue right uh, so if you start from here to here so this is end this is uh, starting point okay this is your head and this is your tail okay this is your tail so element this will return the first element that is the head element okay in the queue but uh, while doing so it will not remove that element okay that will be there in your collection itself okay there is another one offer e okay this here we specify the object that means that needs to be added to queue so it tries to add the object specify to the queue if it if it is able to add the, the element it will return true if it uh, if it is not able to add that element to a queue uh, it will return false for example if you try to add uh, an existing uh, uh, object in set right you will not be able to add another object similar uh, another uh, duplicate obje object right if you try to add a duplicate object in set it will uh, throw an exception okay we'll discuss briefly about whatever uh, whatever the exceptions that are thrown in uh, this interfaces in next class okay uh so we'll discuss about all those things what each and every exception mean and uh, when they those exception will be thrown so most of the met, uh, methods that are uh, discussed as of now uh like some of the methods may throw exceptions i have not mentioned mentioned any of the exceptions uh, in this uh, list but uh, we will see when uh, those exception we discuss about those exceptions we will see which are all the methods throw exception and in under which conditions okay so that we can catch in such scenarios and then uh, we can handle them in a better way okay so now we have offer it tries to add an element to a queue if it is able to add it returns true otherwise it returns false okay so peak is just like a, it returns a element at the head portion and it also it is not uh, removed the element the element which you are trying to peak right that will not be returned okay so you think uh, the these are the duplicate right we will see what are the difference between this uh, these two methods element and peak okay there should be some difference otherwise there was uh, there is no point in uh, these two methods in the same uh, interface right so let us see those things uh, while uh, discussing about our uh, example okay i have uh, mentioned peak twice okay so pole uh, the head element is returned and the, the element is returned uh, i mean removed from the queue okay when you use pole it returns uh, the element which is at the start or head and then that particular element will be removed so remove removes the head element okay uh, okay at this point uh, we will uh, take a break that is like uh, we will uh, continue uh, the rest of the things in tomorrow's class i just want to have uh, i just want to stop at this particular point because i want all of you to go through these methods okay i want all of you to go through these methods and remember these methods okay because when we are uh, when we start doing the examples all these methods will be useful so that is why i just wanted to uh, stop at this particular point i wanted to take two hour class but i wanted to kind of like uh, extend this uh, method and stop at that point so that you can uh, go through these uh, methods and 
uh, when we start uh, doing examples, we can use this method and uh, start doing examples. Okay. So what I would request all of you to do uh, after this session is please go through this uh, method, understand what each and every method does, and try to relate these methods to uh, whichever uh, the simple things which you can uh, relate, so that you can remember all these methods. Okay. So that you can remember all these methods. For example, you can uh, draw a particular uh, diagram and keep it uh, next to your uh, uh, like uh, normal place where you study, right? There you can uh, have a kind of like reference card or reference the document uh, where you can go through uh, whenever you want for uh, remembering these methods. Okay. So I want to kind of like stop uh, this session at this point. Uh, hope no one uh, minds it. Okay, so let us uh, stop at this uh, point. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, we can discuss now. Otherwise, we will uh, wind up this particular call. But I would uh, request strongly uh, suggest and request all of you to go through these uh, methods. These are all these methods form the form uh, the basis of uh, your uh, collection framework understanding. Okay, that is why I want all of you to even if you know, I want all of you to go it once and try to think like where exactly we can use these things, how these methods can be applied, okay? And try to kind of like uh, relate these methods to your uh, day to day life, whatever you are doing, okay? Whatever uh, you do uh, on daily basis, right? Try to relate these methods or these uh, interfaces to those uh, daily activities, whatever you do. And uh, in that way, you will be able to remember these methods uh, in a better way. Okay, so anyone has any question? Please let me know. I think uh, this is the last one. So, uh, okay, that is the last one. We will try to cover uh, more in uh, tomorrow's session. Uh, let us see. Okay. So let me know if uh, anyone has any question. Otherwise, we'll uh, stop at this point. It was another uh, very small session. Uh, but I wanted to take a break at this point because uh, I wanted all of you to go through this methods once before we start our uh, uh, examples. Okay, Disc when we start our exam, I mean like uh, discussing about abstract classes and then uh, uh, the concrete classes and start doing examples, I just wanted all of you to go through this peacefully once and try to relate these things with whatever is easy for you. Okay, yeah, thanks, thanks for. Uh, Letting you know. Yeah. Anyone else has any other uh, questions? Please go through the go through this list of uh, methods. Uh, I strongly suggest all of you to go through these things. Okay. So if possible, we'll try to take uh, more uh, hours of class tomorrow, so that we can cover as much as possible uh, in the collection framework. And apart from that, there are some other uh, uh, classes that needs to be discussed. Okay. So, and uh, all these things, right, whatever we have discussed so far, like your Lang package, your uh, IO package, and then your uh, util package. All these things are very, very, all the three uh, packages are very, very important for, uh, your very, very important part of your core Java, without which you can't do anything, okay? So, uh, I want all of you to study as much as possible and try to experiment more and more with these three packages. Okay. Uh, once you are once you are uh, fully comfortable with these three packages, understanding uh, advanced Java will be very very easy. Okay. Understanding advanced Java will be very very easy. Even if you think about web services, that will also be very easy. Okay. So that is why I strongly suggest all of you to uh, kind of like go through this the uh, whatever the uh, basics that we have learned over this uh, course of uh, period, right? So go through those uh, basics again and again. And uh, by the time we finish our uh, core Java, I will give one uh, particular simple uh, uh, exercise or kind of like a mini project, which you can try to implement uh, without using UI. Uh, you can use console object to accept the data and the display, whatever the options, all those things, okay? We'll try to do a simple uh, mini, mini project mini not not even mini micro project you can call it as okay where we, wherein we will try to use whatever the concepts we have discussed here 
okay be it your io be it your uh, uh, util package be it your uh, system package i mean lang package be it your basic concepts of uh, all other stuff okay we will try to in implement all those things uh, while doing the particular uh, project okay mini project or whatever it is you can call okay so let me know otherwise we can wind up this particular session if you have any questions any clarification on any of these methods which we discussed just now okay looks like no one has any questions uh, let us uh, wind up this session now and uh, meet tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock if at all any changes are there with respect to timing i'll just shoot out an email to all of you okay Thanks everyone. Thanks for attending this uh, session. Okay. Have a uh, good night. Enjoy your evening. Bye.